How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Wednesday night. It is 9.50 p.m. local time here in California. Wednesday, October 15th, 2025. Latest activity shows a 1.9 across California. Also a 4.3 earthquake. Uh, let's see, where is it? Should be out here in the red flag somewhere. A little hard to find. Oh, there we go. Out there across the uh, Indonesia area. Uh, along the Java Trench, it looks like, actually, starting to fill in here. We did see a little bit of larger movement earlier this evening with a 6.3. Now, that's a little downgrade from the original magnitude, which is a 6.6. Uh, shortly thereafter, a 5.2 earthquake stirring up down here around the Drake's Passage area. Now, a little concerning because I'm not for sure exactly where this is leading to. It could be a bigger event. Uh, it's off of the plate boundary, which is a little odd in the oceanic basin, although this uh, 5.2, a little bit closer here to that fracture boundary. Uh, but for the most part, the larger events have been stirring out here in this uh, oceanic basin here. I don't know if there's any seamounts or not, but uh, it's a little odd to see that large of activity here. Uh, we had a 7.6 earthquake out here uh, just about uh, five days or so ago. And then also a couple months back here, we had another seven pointer. So a little bit of increasing movement in an area that is really not historically active in terms of seismic activity. If you look here on the uh, models, most of the earthquake activity, and which makes sense, would occur along the fracture boundaries there of the uh, oceanic crust. Where the activity is occurring at right now, no recorded history out here across the oceanic basin so something something definitely uh in the works out here i guess we'll have to kind of watch it and see how it progresses but uh, a little bit of a head scratcher out there for sure either way uh, some larger movement out there with a 6.3 earlier this evening uh, also a newer quake up here around the greece area coming in in the last uh 20 or you know, last hour or so it looks like 4.3 greece um, down here towards the plate boundary, looking at the earthquake 3D globe here, uh, looks like that's the uh, one of the most newest quakes here after a, a day of fairly inactivity there. It's been pretty quiet out there in the last 24 hours. Uh, but it looks as though, man, it looks as though things have started to move out here since that uh, 6.3 earthquake struck earlier. A lot of uptick going on up north here. A lot of newer rings there around the... Uh, Looks like underneath Columbia, fairly deep earthquake. Let's see if, uh, yeah, USGS reporting that earthquake as well. 4.3, 100 miles here underneath this area. So some deeper uh, stress quakes being produced there across that subduction zone. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the West Coast, see what we got going on here for uh, Southern California. Lighten up out here along the San Andreas Fault. Uh, a couple earthquakes. Including this one, a 2.0, right smack dab on the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. We do have a couple up here underneath the Fontana area. Looks like a 1.8 and a 1.4. This has been swarming out here in months past. Um, nothing big going on here, but man, I tell you what, just one of these days, this, this map is going to light up with a big red circle and many others. Uh, just, a, 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 you know... It's one of those things here where it could happen at any given time uh, for Southern California. So we do got to be prepared. Uh, some activity down in the uh, Nevada area as well. Uh, Bay Area pretty quiet. As far as Northern California goes, uh, most of the activity from this morning, it looks like we did have one more shallow quake up here along the uh, Trinity Mountains area inland. I've noted a uh, handful of stress quakes out here across the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. now. You know, just because the uh, subduction zone interface sits out here doesn't mean that the stress, you know, doesn't affect areas inland. So we've been seeing a lot of uh, stress quakes out there because of the pressurization going on out there across the southern end of the uh, Cascadia. On that note, let's double check the trimmer counts here this evening. Wow, that's a pretty big uptick. 613 slow slip events up there. Uh, mainly across Vancouver Island ranges. Now we're getting some underneath. Uh, yeah, it looks like underneath Mount um, uh, Mount St. Helens or so. Underneath this area. About 25 miles or so into that subduction zone. Nothing going on here across Northern California. I'm surprised because uh, the uh, stress quakes are definitely showing out there. 
uh, but we're not getting that subduction as far as the two plates go. S slow slip events are a uh, sign that the uh, uh, the two plates are slowly slipping past each other. That's why they call it slow slip events. And uh, of course, when that takes place, uh, we build further strain upstream around the locked area. I'm just starting to wonder if we can't push that plate any further down here across the southern end, and that's why we, that's why we're seeing a lot of uh, uh, stress quakes out here across the area. Uh, who knows? But one of these days, that's not going to be as quiet up here either. Uh, into the uh, Seattle area, or uh, the rest of Washington, I should say, uh, surface-wise, a couple smaller events. I'll double check the um, Mount St. Helens seismic activity here real quick. See what we got going on. That's been an area of interest here with uh, earthquake activity occurring. Let's see what we got here for this evening. Uh, yes, there we go. I see earthquake activity and the amplitudes out here are amplified <laughs> because there's no uh, there's no bigger quakes. And for example, I'll show you out here. Uh, this was a Oh, what was that event from last night? I think a 2.3, very close here. To, that's not going to be this one. This is a separate one. Uh, but this is a 2.3 close to the uh, Mount St. Helens area. Notice how squashed the amplitudes out here where, where you could barely see the lines themselves. And all these other earthquakes are very tiny. Now, those are obviously earthquakes, uh, but the amplitude squashed them. So it should look like this. These are all individual small microquakes occurring underneath Mount St. Helens. And uh, it's just part of an ongoing swarm there that's stirred up in the last month or so. As uh, far as Mount Rainier goes, that's been another area of interest. Nothing really showing up here. I think they completely halted in terms of reporting the activity out here. Uh, a couple earthquakes there. As you can see on the graph, it doesn't take a uh, magnifying glass to see it. It's actually quite uh, prominent here on the graphs themselves. But again, nothing being reported specifically up there around Mount Rainier. A couple away from the area, but uh, aside from that, let's go over here and check out Yellowstone where there was a little swarm this morning. Uh, nothing else being reported here, but I do want to double check that, see what we got going on here. Uh, for the uh, Yellowstone seismograph stations there in northwestern Wyoming. Uh, I'm looking for, let's see, is this YML? Uh, that is it. There's a swarm this morning. Now, I did double check that this afternoon here. There was a line of thunderstorms that fired up around 2 o'clock or so, also around noontime. These are all thunderstorms here, but this, that is not. That was about 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning of pretty intense earthquake activity there at Yellowstone National Park, uh, located around the western edge here of um, Shoshone. Is that right? Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. Uh, west here of Yellowstone Lake, there was a, a good cluster of earthquake activity about 3 o'clock in the morning or so. Got 22 earthquakes being reported there. Nothing big, but man, it really, uh, it really kicked up there for a short period. But these here are thunderstorms. I, I definitely verified that earlier. Really no other earthquake activity since that uh, swarm stirred up, but we'll kind of keep an eye on that. Uh, the rest of the states out here, we got uh, Texas moving, oil fields out there, really nothing new. One earthquake outside the New Madrid seismic zone there. That uh, is relatively quiet for now. Uh, take a look here at the bigger picture of things. Japan uh, got one earthquake up here around the Nankai Trough on the back side. That's always worrisome there, a 3.3. See that earthquake? This is the Nankai Trough Zone here, 3.3, um, fairly deep. It looks like it may be associated with that subduction zone there, so we will keep an eye on that because obviously it's been building up some steam and momentum here for a little while. Uh, pretty good cluster going on across the uh, Philippines still, some aftershock activity. Definitely a notable increase here across the Java Trench northward. Uh, New Zealand area. One more deep earthquake there following that 5.4 along the Kermadec Trench. That 3.4, uh, well, that's a deep one there. More than likely associated with the uh, Hikarangi subduction zone that sits underneath this area. Uh, that's at uh, 181 kilometers deep for that quake. So pretty decent uh, deep one. Nothing big going on down there for now, though. Um, but we definitely do got things stirring up out here out in the uh, Drake's Passage area. I'd kind of like to hear uh, maybe what you guys think is uh, maybe going on out here. I, I've seen a couple people saying uh, it's uh, Leviathan down here. 
you know, the dragon or something waking up. Uh, but, you know, realistically, let's think about what's going on out here. If this is going to lead to a, uh, you know, maybe some type of super volcano underneath this area. I, I mean, it's just odd to see uh, a large amount of earthquake activity in the oceanic basin out here with no reason for it. There's no fracture boundary uh, seamounts out here. I mean, I think there's a couple out here. Uh, but who really knows, you know, exactly what's going on here? Those are some big earthquakes to be having out in the basin like that, away from any fracture zone. So kind of curious to see what maybe um, uh, y'all thoughts are on that. Hey, I use y'all. I'm not from the south, but occasionally I like to slip that in there. Uh, so let me know here in the comments of this video. Uh, definitely uh, I will res respond back to it uh, if you are inclined to uh, leave a comment there. Uh, let's see, anything else going on out here, folks, uh, as far as any major movement goes? Um, I mean, that's a decent earthquake there, the 6.3. That's pretty much the largest one here, I believe, in the last week. Let's take a look here. Uh, well, that the 7.6 down there in, in the uh, Drake's Passage area, 6.3 there, the uh, fourth largest one there today. Let's go ahead and check out space weather activity because we do have a massive coronal hole facing us. 87. Last time we had a decent coronal hole facing us. Well, we've seen all that big earthquake activity ramping up there around the Philippines. Uh, so it's very visible here on the UV image here of the sun as well. That thing is directly facing us. So we'll watch here the next couple days. I mean, I guess the 6.3 would account for this, you know, currently facing us. So... I'll see if anything else stirs up while that is uh, shooting straight out magnetic lines here into the uh, into space there from from the sun. We do have a uh, number of M flares that have stirred up out here as well, including a long duration one that uh, may have uh, produced a CME. Either way, it looks like this sunspot right there is continuing to produce constant solar flares. It is uh, getting to a point though where it's almost facing away from the planet. Uh, so if anything were to blast off there right now, it'd still be geo-effective, pending it's a full halo CME. Uh, but we'll keep an eye there on 4246. It is a decent sized sunspot with quite a bit of complexity, more so than 4248 over here. But even so, 4248 does have a uh, little bit of a central core there along the uh, magnetic structure. Uh, let's see what we got for the flare threat. Still elevated right now. 60% chance there for M flare. X flare around 15% chance. Aurora activity. That is going to be for tonight, I believe. Uh, well, not tonight. Tonight. You know, it's still Wednesday night here my time. But for Thursday night, we'll see if that stirs up or not. But it looks like maybe a G2 class storm around uh, just about the perfect time there. 2100 uh, into the evening hours. This is UTC time, so any time after dark there on Thursday night, might be able to see something out there. All right, um, real quick, Storm Prediction Center out here. Nothing major going on for the severe weather world. Day four, though, does have uh, what looks like maybe a severe weather threat across Arkansas and a couple other states down here. We'll check back on that as uh, we get a little bit closer. Uh, storm systems out here along the west coast starting to move to the east there. Our next storm looks to be uh, around this weekend or so for the Pacific Northwest. Uh, after that, uh, man, I'm hoping that we'll get some rain down here in Northern California. Uh, but the storm door definitely looks like it's open there along the Pacific, getting slammed up there. I just need that a little bit further south here so we can get uh, in on some of that action. Hurricane potential, I don't really see anything major going on there for the tropics, the Gulf, or the Atlantic. Got one system maybe down here towards the end of October. But that's a ways out, and also as far as time frame goes, that you know that may not actually happen there. But man, look at that massive low pressure bringing in a bunch of cold air and blue. That's snow on the map. I think uh, quite a few of us are ready for some wintertime temperatures. I know I am. Of course, I'm out here in Northern California. We don't get snow here in the valley. Maybe once in a great wall up in Redding, uh, but we do get snow up in the Sierra Nevada Mountains and the Coast Range there. All right, seismograph stations out there, they are uh, pretty calm. It looks pretty quiet there for now, but again, uh, keep an eye on things out here. Some big time adjustment going on there across the uh, southern portion of the globe. I want to see, let's take a look here. 
So that 7.6 stirred up on the 10th of this month, five days ago. The 7.4 was one day prior uh, to that uh, seven pointer down in the Drake's Passage area. I'm just kind of looking to see what stirred up following movement down south here. Um, where's that 7.6 right here? Looks like there was a 5.7 Philippines and then another 6.3. So really not a whole lot of uptick following that movement down south, but you just never know. I still think something else out here is brewing underneath the area. Uh, and that's off the coast here, off the tip there of Argentina. All right, folks, have a good night. We'll see you guys out here in the morning for the uh, Thursday morning update. That just reminded me I got to go take out my garbage, Thursday morning garbage. All right, have a good one. Stay safe.